Liberty Vanguard is coming up pretty fast. And so as a result, I wanted to take a little bit of time today and talk about another game that we can look at in 2021. This one being Infinite Warfare. Back in the day, the heavily criticized, torn apart game that was Call of Duty in 2016 and 2017. But how does that stack up now in 2021? Are things better? Did we look at it incorrectly? Whatever the case may be, we're gonna be talking about how the game plays in 2021 and some of the cool things that honestly came along with it. So as we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. Did you guys like Infinite Warfare? What are your truly honest thoughts about the game? And also, what game would you like to see here as we round out some of the In 2021 series coming up here in the next couple of weeks? If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. The same for a thousand likes on the video. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. All things retrospective Call of Duty videos like this, and also a ton of stuff coming up in regards to Vanguard and Warzone with a full launch of the game here in a couple of weeks. If you're interested in any of that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. That said, let's jump right into it. So, Infinite Warfare in 2021. One, what's it like? As always, I want to start out with some of the easier things here, perhaps. Let's talk about player count. Unfortunately, because Black Ops 3 was the first game to remove the player count, we can't actually go back and just give a simple statistic of, okay, there's X amount of players online. But that is something that I usually base off of how easy it is to find lobbies. And surprisingly, even though we're now kind of on that edge of where we're getting to older Call of Duties when we take a look at Infinite Warfare, as strange as that may seem, it seems still so familiar, it was still incredibly easy to find lobbies and that's something that's coming from a PlayStation 4 copy being played on a PlayStation 5. No crossplay or anything like that as we saw since Modern Warfare but lobbies were relatively easy to find so it felt populated enough to go back and have a somewhat normal experience here. But when you jump into the actual gameplay when you load into the maps and things like that having done these retrospective videos so long you start to find a pattern and this one still rings true here at this. Things like your levels, your skill caliber, those are really all over the place and dependent on whatever match you end up getting in. The nice part about Infinite Warfare is that it's pre sort of skill based matchmaking era that was introduced with Modern Warfare. It was after Advanced Warfare's attempt at that two years earlier, but even while deep down there still is some skill based matchmaking algorithm, it is nowhere near as heavy and as present as what we'd see today. So you'll see things of skill calibers all over the place, guys that are just picking up a controller in this game for the first time and are maybe say level one or people that have been sticking around here and are master prestige 30 and know exactly what they're doing every angle to pre-aim and things like that. So when you jump in, you'll probably see a little bit of everything, which is probably what you want. But one of the big things in terms of game play and what influenced that in 2016 and 2017 with Infinite Warfare was a little bit of the movement, which we'll talk about in just a second, and then also the influence that specialists had, or rather combat rigs had, within each individual match. Now, the combat rig system was something that kind of took the Black Ops 3 specialist, that hero idea and identity of a game, and wanted to expand upon that a little further. You ended up having six different combat rigs with the ability to have a payload and a trait for each, both of those having three separate options. So you could end up having nine different combinations per combat rig here, and you could play around with each of those per game. In a sense, it was cool. Wasn't quite my jam here whenever we jumped into Infinite Warfare, and still to this day, really isn't my thing. I know that I choked a decent little streak here that you may or may not see within the gameplay. I'm not sure just yet, but it was due to the micro turret of the Striker combat rig, something that was just a free earnable turret that gives kills and kills people off of streaks like that. So depending on who you ask, it was a great addition. Depending on who else you ask, it may have been not so great. However, when you look at the other thing that really influenced what we saw within Infinite Warfare, that was probably the movement system. To me, I think this was a more refined version of Black Ops 3, and there was a large rumor around the time when Infinite Warfare came out that the game was basically scrapped halfway through development, and a lot of what was shipped was built upon the sort of ideology of Black Ops 3. Whether or not that's true or not, I don't think we'll ever know, but it is very similar in a lot of ways, but the movement just felt a little clean if that makes any sense at all. Keeping consistent with things like your wall running and your thrusting movement from Black Ops 3, but in a more refined manner. And when you jump into the game here in 2021, you'll probably see a lot of who's been around for quite some time, who's mastered that movement versus those that may not be. The casuals that are going back either like myself for the first time in a year since the last time we've discussed Infinite Warfare, or maybe for the first time ever. The gunplay feel here going back to Infinite Warfare in 2021, it's certainly different. Infinite Warfare still predated that introduction of the predictive recoil system that we've seen the last couple of years, that starting in Black Ops 4, so you had some randomized recoil patterns to an extent, but as you'll see with a lot of older Call of Duties, recoil is still relatively 
non-existent compared to where we are today. Some weapons have a little bit more kick than others, and then there are others that have almost none whatsoever. So it makes gunplay interesting. A lot of scenarios, especially with Infinity War games and Infinite Warfare being no exception, the TTK is relatively fast. So you want to have that gun up and be able to get your first shot off as opposed to your enemy getting it off because that could be a matter of who lives and who dies in that gunfight. Outside of that, one of the only other biggest things here in terms of how the gameplay feels right now in 2021 comes down to connection. Truth be told, when I jumped in here, I didn't have any issues for connection. I didn't have any host migration like you'd see in the older, older Call of Duties. Infinite Warfare being run on, if I'm not mistaken, the hybrid system that utilizes some dedicated servers, but also in a backup scenario, if it needs to come to that, a peer-to-peer -peer connection. But never really had any issues here with this. So if you jump on, it'll be something that you'll likely have a decent gameplay experience, all things considered, at least in connection. But with Infinite Warfare in 2021, it got me thinking about some of the stuff that, truth be told, Infinite Warfare either brought to the table or that was actually really cool about the game. But before I jump into that, I want to let you guys know about my friends over at Gamer Advantage. Now, if you're like me, you're either at your desk working on a computer, gaming, or glued to your phone because you're addicted for a prolonged period of time each day. That can take a toll on your eyes and play around with things like your sleeping quality and patterns and you might not even realize it. That's where they come in. Now, I've used blue light glasses for years thinking to myself, oh, this $15 pair from Amazon is just fine. But let me tell you, man, if you want to invest in something like your eye health, just fine isn't what you should be striving for. Gamer Advantage is head and shoulders above any other brand on the market claiming to offer similar results. They're the most comfortable, lightweight, and durable frames on the market and can even be prescription ready. Cut to be specific just for you and your insurance can even cover that. But best of all to me, there's zero visual distortion in their lenses. No yellow hue or ugly visual change or anything like that. Not even kidding, I forget that I even have mine on sometimes, especially when I have the clear framed horizon glasses on, but I've been using their stuff since the start of the year and I have not once had any second thoughts. So if you're interested in investing in your eye health and want the best on the market, I promise you, you'll be happy with these. If you're interested, check out the link in the description below and consider using code ESPRESSO. It'll net you a nice little discount because who doesn't love saving money? But anyways, let's talk about these things with Infinite Warfare, what it brought to the table and some cool things that it offered that may not have gotten its day in the limelight or chance really. And that's where I'll start out by saying, truthfully, I think this game would have thrived if it wasn't a Call of Duty game. Still holding one of the highest dislike ratings on YouTube ever, just simply the trailer was evidence of that. At the time though, there also was the most likes the trailer in any Call of Duty game in history had gotten, despite again, that dislike bomb meme associated with it. So the eyes were there, people found it interesting and they did enjoy it. Now, for me, it was echoed a lot around the community that the game at the time was trash. But for me, I honestly never really felt that strongly about it. It wasn't my cup of tea, sure, but I think what did it for me was that this kind of felt like a Black Ops 3.5 to me. It felt like a major expansion for a game rather than something new. And for that, I think it was just kind of fatigued. And so therefore, if you were around the channel, you probably remember we didn't upload a lot of Infinite Warfare. To this day, though, it's the Call of Duty that I've played the least, but for no other reason other than that. I was just fatigued. It was a monotonous gameplay loop, but I never really considered it a bad game. Just maybe not traditional Call of Duty. When I look at it objectively, the game did offer quite a bit, even if in 2016 or 2017, I or others didn't quite give it as much a chance as perhaps we should have. One thing that still to this day is awesome to me is that there was tons of content to grind out. Black Sky in particular, that was probably one of the biggest ones here. That mastery camo was one of the biggest camo grinds we've ever seen, if not even still to this day that we've ever seen, given that it required mastery on the game's legacy weapons even, which you could only unlock certain amounts of those every few prestiges with tokens you end up getting. So you had to play and progress to even have the chance to get Black Sky Unlike in every other COD game, you could end up staying without prestiging and get, say, Dark Matter or something like that. You didn't have to progress through the ranks if you didn't want to. In addition to that weapon camo, though, you also had Black Sky grind for your combat rig or that specialist, allowing you to earn Black Sky for your helmet and your uniform, something that was similar to hero gear from Black Ops 3, but kind of going a step further with it. You also had mission teams, which with five by the end of the life cycle of the game had ranks upwards of level 50 for each, progressible through missions for each match that you ended up playing, tasking you with completing a certain number of maybe out of your comfort zone challenges in exchange for XP towards that mission team. Grinding these not only again helped your mission team level, but also your overall XP, but in addition to that, allowed you to unlock exclusive variants per 10 mission team levels. If you were a completionist, there was definitely a lot to do in that regard that rewarded you with in-game items that were kind of tangible in that sense.
sense. Not just calling cards. You also had challenges in your barracks that allowed for 100% completion, but outside of that, there were cool innovations in return to forms like things like the score streak upgrade system that was a slight deviation from what we had seen two years prior with Advanced Warfare. You also had plenty of options for your specialist, again, or your combat rig with three payloads and three traits. You had the return to form of a traditional pick 10 system in your creator class. You had other awesome things like the ability to load the map during the pregame. Not a lot of people realize that, but if you were to look at the pregame countdown timer, the game actually loaded in the background here with that, cutting down on the load time of a static image screen or anything like that, and making it feel like a more seamless transition from lobby to gameplay experience. You had in-depth stats that could be seen in your post-game match that really were unrivaled by any other Call of Duty game at that point. You had a sheer absurd amount of camos available for customization it afforded, though unfortunately a lot of that did come in the way of supply drops. You had colorful maps within an Infinity War title, which was a rarity up until this point, and even maybe still today, to who you ask, it might be a rare things, with Infinity Ward often being criticized for their dull or lackluster palettes, a lot of grays and drab colors like that. I will still stand by it to this day. I think that Mayday had the best skybox out of any Call of Duty map maybe ever. That is seriously one of my favorite skyboxes in designs here in that environment and was so off the beaten trail from what we've seen previously to have a map set on the edge of a black hole. That's so cool. You had login bonuses that allowed you to keep coming back and again, grinding out things here with salvage being offered daily and season pass bonuses, offering up some additional stuff here if you paid into that. Supply drop yields also were a little bit easier to obtain with keys dropping faster and being somewhat dependent upon your gameplay variables as well. So there were a lot of things that Infinite Warfare got a terribly bad rap off the beginning and off the rip. But for those that stuck around, there absolutely was a lot of stuff that throughout the year, maybe made it worth it to play that game. It might not have been everybody's cup of tea, and that is entirely fine. Again, it wasn't mine, and so therefore, I didn't really stick around. But if you go back in 2021, you want something that doesn't have strict skill-based matchmaking. You want something that's a little different. You want to feel a little bit of that Jetpack era Call of Duty gameplay. This honestly isn't a bad game to jump back and spend a couple of hours on and revisit. So that said, that's Call of Duty Infinite Warfare within 2021, what it's like today, and that's where we're going to wrap it up. So I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What did you guys think of Infinite Warfare, either back then or now today? Are you guys like me? You just didn't give it as much a chance. It wasn't your cup of tea back then, but looking back on it objectively, it wasn't all that bad. Did you love it? Did you hate it? The entire way through, whatever the case may be, drop your thoughts. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing or any all things Warzone, Vanguard coming up here very soon. And of course, some retrospective looks at games in the past. But that said, that's where we're going to wrap it up. So thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys later. My name is Espresso. Take care and peace.